Our next presenter has been with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism for over 21 years and is currently the Chief Aviation Specialist. He's a graduate of Texas Tech University, a licensed pilot with approximately 800 hours. He's also a member of AOPA, the National Business Aviation Association, Florida Aviation and Trade Association, the Florida Aero Club, and he is a coordinator for the Bahamas Aviation Council and the Bahamas Monthly Fly-In. It is really easy and it's fun to fly in the Bahamas. His topic today is flying in the islands of the Bahamas. Let's welcome Greg Roll. Good morning, uh, fellow pilots. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, pilots, for coming this early this morning to hear me talk about how you could fly your aircraft safely to the islands of the Bahamas. You know, this past week been a great week for us at the Sun Fun booth, and we had a lot of pilots who came by, got information that they wanted to fly the aircraft to the Bahamas. One guy came by me and said, Greg, you know something, I got my license this year. I came to a seminar last year, and uh, I, I went to the Bahamas. And, and I think we need to tell the FAA, anyone who does not fly to the Bahamas should take it back, because it's, it's too easy to go to the Bahamas. Well, again, thank you. My name is Greg Rowe. I'm the Chief Aviation Specialist on flying to the islands of the Bahamas for the Ministry of Tourism. The Bahamas Ministry of Tourism has basically put in place an aviation program, and specifically basically to tell private pilots how they could fly uh, to the Bahamas and enjoy our destination. Uh, the islands of the Bahamas has 700 islands, keys and rocks, and the Bahamas was an independent nation where we basically had uh, gained our independence from Great Britain in 1973. Now the Bahamas government has sent me here to make sure that we impart all the knowledge to you guys how to get there, to and from the Bahamas. The Bahamas is a very short distance over water from Bimini is 46 miles and uh, to Grand Bahama Island is 60 nautical miles away. It's beautiful scenery, uh, multiple airports, uh, good facilities uh, for general aviation traffic, and easy customs and departure clearance for customs and uh, immigration procedures, and also no landing fees at government-owned airport. Fuels cost is similar to that of the United States. Now let's go into a little bit deeper to say what the Bahamas government has done for general aviation traffic. The infrastructure and the logistics of general aviation, the government of the Bahamas know that when uh, private pilots come to the Bahamas, they want similar, basically, uh, places where they could park the aircraft and actually enjoy the destination. One of the things that we in the Bahamas try to do our best to do is to make sure that the facilities that you are accustomed to over here, when you park the aircraft at the Bahamas, it is safe and secure. One of the things that we're working on is, you know, in the last year, we, we know, you know that Homeland Security is now coming on stream with the NPRM. This is new proposed rule making. Well, the Bahamas is being proactive in this event, fellow pilots. We have, we have uh, actually putting in place computers and internet access for all private pilots getting access to the internet prior to leaving the Bahamas to get back into the United States. So uh, yeah, we, are, we have our ears and eyes to the ground and we're listening to all the details that we need to find out what you need to fly to and from the Bahamas. Because it makes no sense to us for you to be able to get to the Bahamas and then to turn around and it's like almost like a nightmare to get back into the United States. It makes no sense to us. So we put these infrastructures in place. And if we need, if we need to invest certain monies to make sure that they are there, the government is intent to do that. One of the things, too, that we have put in place is the Bahama Host Program. And people ask me, why do you have this program on this uh, seminar? Well, basically, the Bahama Host Program is a program where Bahamians or residents in the Bahamas has access to, basically, to information. 
If you, if you talk to any private pilot, any uh, guess, uh, person in the Bahamas about their country, they'll be able to speak intelligently to you about it. But more importantly, we need to sensitize persons in frontline tourism, whether it be customs, immigration, the, the hotel worker, the tourism official, the taxi drive person, any, any person who you may encounter on your travels to the Bahamas, we sensitize them to why you're here. Because it makes no sense for them to the taxi drive or the bus, wait, the waiter, or, or, or the, even the braid at the straw market. You go to the straw market and they don't treat you with respect. You don't need to come back to this destination. And one good thing, I, and, I, and I always use this example, since 9-11, as you know, in the, in the Bahamas, we have this thing saying, when the, U, when the U.S. sneeze, we catch the cold in the Bahamas. Only 46 miles away, things change. So after 9-11, you know, there, there were, you know, the FAA grounded all traffic, especially all VFR traffic. And lo and behold, the Bahamas economy suffered as a result. The, the custom officers asked, Greg, where's, where's, the, where's the pilots? I said, now, if I send them to you guys, are you going to take care of them? Because you know we've been working on some um, details on how we could get VFR open as quick as possible. So during that longer period, the Bahamas were virtually empty. There was no traffic. So the the majority of Bahamians or residents in the Bahamas saw what we were talking about. If you guys doesn't come, we must have closed down because you know we have no oil. No minerals, no diamonds, no nothing, n nothing that we could rely on other, I believe, banking. So we rely heavily on tourism. So now this course, Bahama Host course, tells, tell the, the nation, tell all the residents why you private pilots are important to us. And with that, they take care of you. So if you go to the Bahamas now, you'll see a change of attitude, a change of welcoming attitude where pilots where yeah, residents of the Bahamas love and want to see you in our country. Phones at ports of entry. Again, the Bahamas government is invested to put phones. If you look to the right, upper right, you see the blue phones. That's AOP representatives there. Um, blue phones are at all ports of entry. And these phones are put in place for you, the private pilots. Here again, these phones are policed by Bahamas Customs. So. No other visitor could go to these phones and make a phone call and say, this uh, answered me and the dog coming home later on. No, only for private pilot because we have a speed dial. So you press uh, certain numbers, it goes directly to U.S. Custom so you could tell them of ETA coming back in the United States. Radio coverage. The Bahamas government is, is working feverishly to make sure that we have in place good radio coverage so that when you dial, when you call, or 122.4 NASA radio, you get 122.4, 128.0. It's important to close the flight plan to get weather briefing and so forth and so on. So we're putting that in place. And if you go to the Bahamas, uh, you will see that we have a big welcome sign saying the Bahamas, Islands of the Bahamas welcome private pilots. Night flying in the Bahamas is something that we're working on to make sure that, that we bring up to speed because a lot of time pilots want to come to the Bahamas, but they they, they, let's say coming from New York, they want to come down to the Bahamas, but the time they get down to, to Fort Lauderdale, it's nightfall. And uh, in the Bahamas, you cannot fly to the family islands after dark. Only Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. Most pilots do not want to go to Grand Bahama or Nassau or Paradise Island. They want to go to the out island. So the government is now looking at ways on making that happen. And one of the good things, too, um, we have changed from IKO to FAA. And this, this, this is a good change because the International Civil Aviation Organization now is under the FAA. So all the rules and regulation that uh, you pilots are accustomed to here in the United States, we now have the same ability to, for you here in, uh, in the Bahamas. And this is, this is, a, corp, this is, a, this is a, a map of all of the uh, communication remote outlets. These are outlets in the Bahamas where there are repeaters that will, that will make sure that, that when you dial NASA radio, you'll be able to get NASA radio. So if you look at um, the Bahamas, we're we now putting them throughout the islands to make it increasingly easy 
for you to uh, access this information. Also, you need to look, one thing to bear in mind, because uh, God was so good to the Bahamas and blessed us so tremendously, we, we are just only 46 miles, so Miami Center and Miami Radio could cover the whole Bahamas. So you actually could fly your aircraft from Fort Lauderdale and go all the way down to, let's say, Long Island and Cat Island and still be talking to Miami Center. In fact, that happened uh, a, a year ago where uh, some friends of mine from AOPA went down to Long Island. They climbed it about uh, 7,000 feet. Uh, they, they put in the thing 127.2 and was able to get clearance, an IFR clearance, back in the Fort Lauderdale. And the Fort Lauderdale came back and said, uh, Mitsubishi 101, um, uh, you, you're cleared to Fort Lauderdale 300 and 311 miles. Um, south of um, Fort Lauderdale Airport. Now, fellow pilots, that is extremely a safety and, and a well, welcome relief because you could speak into uh, someone that you're accustomed to hearing all the time and you feel comfortable with it, and you, you're in the Bahamas. So that's another plus for us. What's that? The frequencies. Yeah, you, you, could, you could call my office and we could, we could send one out to you. Now this is, uh, um, people look at this and they say, this has to be a painting, because there's no way we have, we have seen this information, seen this type of uh, layout. A fellow pilots could say, this is the same how the United States, parts of the United States were in the 17th century, before the Plymouth came. But now in the Bahamas, we still reserve this kind of nature for you. So you could go to this, you could go to this kind of island. Now in the back there may, could be an airport strip. And just the beauty about private pilots, you have access to getting to this type of islands. Now, commercial air traffic will not go to this island because it's the smallest airstrip, only 3,000 feet, maybe 4,000 feet tops. But you, fellow pilots, have an access to get to that. Now we'll talk about some general information. We'll talk about government airport. Now, when we talk about government airport, that means the airport is owned and operated by the Bahamas government, and all pilots are welcome. We also have private airports. Now, when I say private airports, that doesn't mean it's restricted. It's just private because it's owned by uh, maybe a property, a hotel property, or some private investor. But most pilots uh, are welcome to that. You're going to, during this conversation this morning, we'll talk about ports of entry. Ports of entry is basically where we have immigration and Bahamas immigration and Bahamas custom facilities to actually officially clear you into the country. Uh, when you come to the Bahamas, you must land at the, your first stop must be cleared at a port of entry. Once you have completed that first stop and you cleared Bahamas Customs and Immigration, you're free to travel to any island that's, that's, that does not have uh, custom facilities on the property. And then, and as we talked in the book and also John Abradovich that you'll hear on the, on the DVD later on this afternoon, means just, just later on in a few minutes. The hardest part of flying is to get from where we are, Minnesota, New York, whatever, down to Desi Lakeland. That's why we intrigued all private pilots prior to, to get, we get, try to get the word out as much as we can. Come, when you're coming down to Sun and Fun, bring your passport and so you could add on a trip to the Bahamas because since you're down so close to the Bahamas and you did all that hard work to get down here, getting to the Bahamas is just a snap. <coughs> now, they say, now what do I do, Greg, to actually <coughs> get to the Bahamas? Well, one of the things the FAA has is noted that each aircraft must have N numbers. And these N numbers are 12 inch N numbers. And and this is because when you cross the ADAS, this is imaginary line around the United States, when you cross the ADAS, um, the uh, authorities want to see the end number clearly. I mean, most persons you know, in the United States, they don't have, it's not required to have 12 inch end numbers, but come across the ADAS, they want to see, and they don't want, they, they don't want to even uh, mistake the numbers. So it's clearly visible at 12 inches, uh, the numbers that they require. That's what they want going across the data. There's no need to depart from a port of entry. So let's say we leave it from here from Lakeland. 
you do not need to go to Orlando where they have U.S. Customs or, or Tampa, but you just to go directly. And uh, no, you do not need to call U.S. Bahamas Customs to say that I'm coming into the country. Now, you, you must need to file an international flight plan. Now, when it's an international flight plan, international, this basically means that we are going to an international destination. But the fact of the matter is, it's the same international uh, flight plan that maybe you're accustomed to. One added feature they may ask, you may be your name on persons on board. But if you're going on, let's say, if you're going on to Island Morado or someplace in the Keys or, or Miami or only going to the, to the Cross B airspace, it's the same kind of flight plan. So you don't get alarmed by it, the international flight plan. Now, p p pilots ask me that, um, can I take my firearms? And, and the question is, the answer is absolutely yes. Now, the thing is, I, I must caution a few points here is that one, you, you should, prior to going to the Bahamas, you should go to U.S. Customs and say, I'm taking my firearm to the Bahamas. And this is only a, a procedure that will help you on re-entry. Because once they know that you, you, you went and you told them that you're taking your firearms, when you come back, you should have no problem because you, you already talked about it. Secondly, you, you must disclose the amount of, of, uh, of uh, firearms, I mean the, the rounds that you have on your, on your firearms. So these two things are something that you could do to make life easy for you. And then once, once you get to the Bahamas, you also do the same thing on that end. Uh, the custom decal sticker it must be purchased for all aircraft traveling in and out uh, of the country. And this is something that's regulated by the U.S. Customs. And for further information, you could go to our website. We go to custom website. You can go to our website too because we also have a link there. But you can go to the U.S. Custom website and um, get more information on that. Now, in the Bahamas, we, Bahamas Customs really, really rare ask you for your license, your medical, aircraft registration, and so forth. But, but by no means, you must not uh, have them because coming back into the States, U.S. Customs will require those, those documents. So we still need to have them on board. See, in the Bahamas, we try to make it so laid back and easy as possible for you to actually get from your, your aircraft through customs on the beach with the Bahama Mama as quick as possible. So we, 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 some of, some of the, the, the information that we know that you have, we don't need to even ask them for it because you know you have it. Because for, for, for a person, for a pilot to come to the Bahamas without the pilot license, all the medical and all these other things, and, and they say they're coming for the weekend, and not have it. And you know, even when you fly automatically, you must have them on, on your, your possession. It's ludicrous to even um, try it. So, so we just put this in here for safety precaution. But in the Bahamas, we don't take you all through, the, through all these procedures. Now, in route to the Bahamas, it, it persons, each person on board will need an approved life vest. Now, life raft is not required. But I told, I told pilots, if you feel comfortable, and if your wife feel comfortable with a life raft in the, in the aircraft, by all means, please put one there. Now, once you have taken off from Lakeland, let's say if you're heading on to the Bahamas, you must activate your flight plan. And you activate the flight plan with Miami Radio or St. Pete's Radio. And they will activate the flight plan to head towards the Bahamas. You don't need to stop on the East Coast or oh, you do not even need to even uh, stop at all. Just go uh, stop to the first part of entry in the Bahamas. If you say going to Exuma, you could go directly to Exuma. There's no need to stop in, 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 in route. Now prior to reaching the destination, you must close your flight plan. And again, this, this is only for VFR traffic. And we realize that many of our pilots uh, fly VFR to the Bahamas. So this is the information for, for uh, VFR. IFR traffic do does not need to open because it's automatically on a flight plan. Once, once you get, once you get um, uh, clearance, everything is automatic for you. Now, if you are unable to close your flight plan in the air, you, you remember we talked about the blue phones that are designated for private pilots. Those blue phones will automatically help you, assist you closing the flight plan. And one good thing about this, um, if you forget and you get to the hotel, you could all automatically dial 
WX brief, and then they will, you know, you get Miami Radio, uh, you know, and then uh, close your flight plan. So that also is an added boost for you. Uh, in the Bahamas, it's very simple. You know, clearance, we have a form called a C7A form. This form, the Bahamas government has made it increasingly easy, easier to, to, for you to clear. There's no need for no transire, and there's no need to get a cruising permit because the C7A is, is built in your declaration, general, general deck, and also your cruising permit. Now, uh, since 9-11, we, we add a few more uh, points. So now, within the next couple um, new forms that we have now on stream, we'll have a person's name and a passport number and so forth and so on. But the C7A is all the form you need to get into the Bahamas. Now, getting for immigration, you only need an immigration card. And these forms could be uh, picked up upon arrival. But the C7A is on our website. It's flying.bahamas.com. And you could go there, you could download these forms and um, print them out and have them prepared well in advance prior to um, getting in, in the Bahamas. And also in the back of the room, we have some booklets called the Pilot uh, Guide Procedures. They have the forms in there as well, so that you could use basically to open up, uh, uh, make life easy for you guys to fill out those forms. And, and again, you could go to Kinko's and Xerox those forms. So it has not, it don't have to be the original. You, you could just go ahead and uh, get it done. And this is a copy of the C7A form. Again, uh, one of the member, one of our first thing to the Bahamas, you need a line of the port of entry. And again, the port of entry is where they have customs and immigration to clear you into the country. And you must close your flight plan upon landing in the Bahamas. Now, you need to present your pilot license, uh, a proof of citizenship. And again, I must stress now that uh, just lately we need to ensure that pilots have their passport. And uh, there's no longer, you could use your pilot license uh, with a photo ID. We must have a, a passport. And this is Homeland Security um, procedure that they put in place just, just, just lately. And present the three forms to Bahamas Customs. One form of uh, the immigration card and fellow pilots, that's what all you need to actually clear. Bahamas customs in the Bahamas. But not, Out islands is that just uh, an individual thing or no? Okay, what he said he asked for an arrival report. Now, um, an arrival report is basically uh, a procedure that Nassau uh, and Grand Bahama Island has put in place, and this this is basically put in place for the uh, I, I guess the cross check to make sure that persons pay landing fees and tie down fees and etc. etc. Et and so on and so on, but. That, that, that is, is something that, that is, is really uh, prepared in Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. Now, again, I mentioned 65 percent, almost 70 percent of private pilots, they, they prefer to go into uh, the Out Islands. And the Out Islands is basically, if you, you look at our map, and, you put, and if you, you, you take the eraser and you erase Nassau and you erase Grand Bahama Island, everything else remains, if that is the Out Islands. Because the, the procedures is very limited. You, you know, and we, we we spend more time on the islands, and then plus the islands are where you could go, and then you don't see as many persons. Uh, and it, like we showed that picture early on, where 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 it's like almost New Plymouth in the 17th century. That's the way the old islands look. Uh, of course, now if you go south, it's the, the south you go to the Bahamas is more rustic and more laid back and more relaxed, more relaxed. But then if you go on like the Mars Shop and Treasure Key. Or maybe Naughty Lutra, you'll basically you'll, you'll have a little more, little more nightlife. But again, uh, like John O'Brien said in the thing, you're bound to find an island you like. So if you go to one of islands, one of these islands, and you do not like this island, you say, it's just too busy for me, try another island. If you have 700, 700 of those islands, so you're bound to find one. And uh, welcome uh, to the Bahamas. Now, let's talk about landing, landing in the Bahamas. Now, Nassau and Freeport, we have 
with the control towers. So 25 miles out, you will contact tower, uh, you will contact approach, and approach will give you landing instruction. Of course, you know, it, both in Nassau and Grand Bahama Island, we have ILS approaches. So they will be vectored to you to those approaches if you want to do an ILS approach. Now, if, you, if you're just coming in, if you're just coming in the VFR, you still need to contact them uh, 25 miles out, and they, they will give you the, all, all the procedures for landing. But again, we're talking about the Outer Islands. And the Outer Islands has the uncontrolled airports. And these airports does not have a tower. In fact, some airports don't have any facilities at all. If you go to some remote island, they have no facilities, just a landing strip. So what do I do as a pilot getting into these islands? One of the things that we suggest, and we highly recommend, that you announce the aircraft, the, air, the identification, the location, and your intention. And these are very critical fellow pilots because the, you could fly in not aware of aircraft in the surrounding area. And lo and behold, because you, you come at the 0-9, uh, so you might even see all this traffic around you, and everybody come at this same one little spot. So, so once you announce this information on 122.8, which is the Unicom frequency, which everybody used, they will know exactly some other traffic is in the area. And uh, fellow pilots, I must say, uh, pilots uh, coming and using this approach are being very, very um, sympathetic towards it because they realize that it saves lives. And it makes sense because pilots on the ground will also give you weather, traffic advisory, and because today for me, tomorrow could be someone else. So everyone is a brother keeper. In the Bahamas, the MSL is 1,000 feet, and all, left hand, all traffic is left hand. And one of the things I like to add here is that, that, that landing in the Bahamas, you, you know, you should take off into the wind and land into the wind. Now, that may sound, people say, well, that's common sense, and, and everyone knows that. But you know, in, in, the, Baha in the islands, sometimes pilots become uh, a little time conscious and uh, say, you know, I don't need to go. Uh, it's no one around. I, I, you know, I, and I, you know I'm, I'm, flying and, I'm flying a big high, uh, a heavy uh, eye in here, and I could I have the power to do what I need to do, you know, and, it's, and, the, and the light is, the wind is light and bearable, you know, and that could be avoided. Save lives if it makes follow procedures. And we encourage all pilots to take off in, into the wind. Now, we, Look, I give you some uh, picture about the islands flying, and who could actually tell me which island is that? I, I, not, not Mr. Parker, because he knows, he knows what it is. But uh, so anyway, this this is an, an airstrip landing in the Bahamas, and this is basically Norman's Key. And uh, fellow pilots, it is it looks like it's a painting, but take my advice, it's Norman's Key. And if after this to show the maybe it's afternoon, you could all go to the Bahamas and just verify this. <laughs> and uh, this is a picture of Bimini, Bimini, North Bimini. Uh, think of this, pilots. I'm showing you a couple of these photos because these, these are pictures that only private pilots see. If you're taking a commercial flight, you're looking out through the side window, you cannot, only unless they parallel it, you could see it. But you can look, you can look like if you're looking over just straight ahead, you can see exactly this kind of view. And, and if you like it, you could, you could take a second look at it again. You could talk, come around and look at it again. But the thing is, the whole thing is that you, we have a special privilege being pilots. And you, you work hard to get your license, and you, you, you did good to keep it. And I want to show you how to use it and enjoy it. This is uh, in a place. Uh, Walker's Key. Walker's Key is closed, but uh, we have a customs there. And uh, once the owner buys, the owners uh, renovate the, the new owners renovate the, the hotel, it will be opened up very, very soon. But these are these islands that are they're uniquely different. And, you know, and I put this in there because these are, uh, like I said, no, no, other, no other person visitors could see it. I mean, no, no other person who go on, on the USA and American Eagle could, could talk about this. Because they, they don't go there. You know, and again, once once you're landing and do all those landing uh, procedures and welcome to the Bahamas, you're free to enjoy the Bahamas. And this is a beach in Norma's Key, and we have similar beaches throughout the island. 
Now, we talk about experimental. Experimental uh, owners, they talk about Greg. Uh, talk about us. We want to see, we want to enjoy the Bahamas too. But I'm happy to say that the Bahamas government has put in place a standard violation where uh, experimentals could come to the Bahamas prior to now. Experimentals had to call uh, Bahamas Civilization and get approval each time they want to come to the Bahamas. And of course, you know, if you do that every time and then you, you fellow pilot who over 172, uh, you just, just go straight on over. You mean, you know, you feel like you, they don't really want me here, you know? Well, those days are gone and no longer. Private pilots are welcome uh, for experimental. You just need to come on in. And these are some of the procedures, which is, which is standard, standard, you know, special uh, certificate, uh, your pass, your, your licenses and, um, you know, uh, operating limitations on board. These are things you have already. So just bring me the plane and come on and enjoy our country. And again, this, these are the kind of things that you could do as a private pilot in the Bahamas to enjoy the destination. The Bahamas Comptroller Customs, pilots came back and said, Greg, you know, um, I, I was at Exuma and they charged me overtime. And one pilot said, Chub Key, they charged me overtime. The next pilot said, they charged me overtime. It, 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 becomes, it becomes so, so uh, a regular pattern that I went to the Comptroller Customs, the guy who's in charge of Bahamas Customs, who was responsible for collecting those fees for overtime charges. And I told him, I said, there's a problem. You know, I go to the shows and I, we say inside our manual that there's no overtime charges. But yet when they go to Bahamas Custom, they charge him. So we want to eradicate and put a stop to this. We have a zero policy on overtime charges. So the, the Comptroller Custom put it in black and white that there's no overtime charges whatsoever will be le levied towards uh, the private pilots coming for pleasure. And the reason why it, it's, it's a toss-up, because, because pilots who come for, let's say, charter, and if you, if you pay a charter person to fl fly to the Bahamas and you go after hours or you go on holidays and so forth, they are charged, they charge the operator of that uh, charter overtime charges. So it's like a little gray area. And then a lot of times pilots then will they won't be a charter, but you'll see them carrying people over every day and say, you know, uh, I'm a private pilot, and, and they, they almost have a schedule. And if you ask the person who, who they bring, they didn't really, really don't know them per se, you know. And, and, then, and if you ask them, and if they want to be honest, they will say, yeah, this, this man charged me X, Y, Z. Well, that's, we have all kinds of things. That, that's one aspect of it that happens in the Bahamas. So, so U.S. Custom, Bahamas Customs seeing this, they say, we need to charge the person over time. But for you, fellow pilots who come in for pleasure, there's absolutely no overtime charges. And also, there's no landing fees for, for, for private planes under 6,000 pounds. But this is only at government airport. Now, if you go to the private airstrip, their landing fees will be applied. And, and we talked about the private airstrip where it's owned, operated by the, the hotel is and so forth. And, and also in the booklet that we have in the back of the room, there are a list of all airports that are private and all airports that are government owned. Again, there's no overtime charges whatsoever, whether if it's multi, single engine in, uh, or, or, or not. Once you come in for pleasure, there's no overtime charges. There's also no tie down fees at any government owned airport. And again, I could re relate here that you go to some islands, there are persons who's, who's sitting on the sidewalk that want to assist you in tying on your plane. Now, they may bring their own ropes, and uh, if there happens to be a tie on in place, they may be looking for maybe for a, a tip or something like that. But the government is in pursuit of trying to get tie downs in place. Now, once that has become available, we will we be now hiring out a company that will put tie downs in place just to security for your own aircraft. And when that comes, I think this may change. Now, visiting the islands of the Bahamas, we talk about fuel. And uh, you know, fuel is very expensive now, and 
And um, one pilot came by and he, 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 made, he made a joke at the booth and he said uh, he, he used to travel around to Barbados and Trinidad and, and uh, Bermuda and stuff, you know. But he said, with the cost of fuel being so expensive as it is, he said, I'm, going, I'm, go I'm, I'm just going to stay in the Bahamas, you know. But, the, the, but fuel in the Bahamas is not on all islands. And they are not on all ports of entry. But fuel is never more than 20 minutes away of flying time from each, from each, from a fuel stop to another stop. More, no more than 20 minutes flying time away. And the thing is, with, with, uh, we have seen a major surge in pilots coming to the Bahamas. In fact, the numbers of private pilots coming to the Bahamas is up, almost like uh, five percent. And fellow pilots, as that number continues to grow, we'll see more business opportunities for fuel operators who, who want to put fuel in place to accommodate you guys. So as, uh, in, we, have seen, we have seen more fuel operators open up. We have seen more FBO persons open up. So uh, as you, the private pilot public, comes to the Bahamas, we'll see this be put in place. We talked we talk about night flying that's only in Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. And the thing is, fellow pilots, when you're flying at night, in the Bahamas has a law that you must be IFR rated to fly at night. And you know, when I first got my license, I, I, I was under the notion, I said, you know, why is, why is it that they have uh, quite required IFR? I have my private and I get to fly at night. But fellow pilots, I must say, when you fly into the islands with no rising at night, you don't know which way is up. And if you, if you, if you want to feel the effects from that, let's go in the Tampa Bay area, in, in the Tampa Bay, and head towards, head west at night. And let's go for, for, fly for about for a minute or two where you can see no pitch dark, and you will see why the Bahamas government put that in place. And this is for your own safety and, safety and security. Now maintenance and repair, this is something that, is, that the pilot wants to know that if they go to the Bahamas to enjoy uh, an island destination, vacation, that they have access to repair and maintenance. Now, we have maintenance in Nassau, Grand Palm Island, uh, Exuma, uh, Eleuthera, and maybe some of the smaller islands, but they're sporadic. But we also have um, Banyan, who is also is a corporate uh, um, industry partner that is willing to dispatch the aircraft to the Bahamas uh, in the event that you have uh, problems in the Bahamas. Runway length in the Bahamas, just so you're flying, the pilots also ask, what is the runway length in the Bahamas? Now in the back of the room, we also have the pilot's guide and, and the airport information page. We have a listing of all airports and tells you the runway. So you don't need to guess or, or, or figure out um, which, which, which length is the runway. And the average runway length in the Bahamas is 5,000 feet. Good thing about the Bahamas being so close to the United States, we have the, the WX brief and uh, we could get weather briefing. And this is also critical for flying in and around the islands. Weather in the Bahamas is similar to, to that of South Florida. If you don't like it, just sit around for about a minute or two, it'll change, <laughs> you know. Okay, let's talk about now, we had enjoyed the Bahamas, had a good time, um, and it's time to get back home. What do I do? First, you must depart from a port of entry. And again, we talk about port of entry being where you have the U.S. Bahamas Customs and Immigration declare you outside the country. You almost file an international flight plan. Again, this, this flight plan could be filed up to 24 hours in advance. And you could file it from your, from your hotel, or you could get to the, to the blue phone at the airport, and you could file a flight plan. Also, you must call U.S. Customs and advise them of your ETA. Now, this is a new procedure that, that um, um, U.S. Customs, really, it's not really new, but they have, re, they have enforced it more, even more. And U.S. Customs require that you must go to a landline and call U.S. Customs, telling them of ETA. And, and fellow pilots, I must say, that the Bahamas government has, has stepped up to the plate and said, I want to be, I want to help in this regard. So you don't need to look for your cell phone and say, uh, I, I can't get, a, I can't get the uh, frequency. I can't, you know, it's, it's no um, place for me to call or go to a, a paid phone and you're unable 
to get the right currency to make that call. You go to the blue font, and the blue fonts are free. So in the back of the book, uh, back of the room, in the, in the pilot's guide, this, the, we have the numbers for all U.S. Uh, custom facilities on the East Coast, and all speed dials. So what you just press the number, and it would automatically go into U.S. custom, and then you could give them your information. Also, as a backup to, let's say if you go to the Bahamas, and uh, we, 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 don't, we, we have a deal with um, Bahamas Telecommunication, that if you're unable to get access to that blue phone at the airport, you could, you could look, at, look around at any uh, paid phone in the area. In that book, there's, there's the numbers of U.S. Customs facilities throughout the U.S., throughout the Florida area. You could dial 1305 plus the numbers at any paid phone, and that number will go through. And this is only for, for those numbers that are listed uh, for U.S. Customs. So if you dial 305, you like you, you dial your home number, it will not go through. But those are the backup things that we have in place. So, so we, we, we are very committed to having your business, and we are very committed to keeping your business. So that's why we put these, these small things in place for you. U.S. Customs require that, I mean, Bahamas Customs require that you, you, you put in place one C7. Remember we talked about the C7A coming in? It's a C7 to leave the Bahamas. And then also you turn in one of your immigration card. Immigration will give you a copy of that immigration card when you, when you arrive. You fill out the form, and it's two part. They give you the original, and they give you a copy. So they, they retain the original, and they give you the copy. Now, when you're leaving the Bahamas, you must re return that copy to them. And also, now we put this in here, we say show copy of your flight plan. We've been having, uh, for the last couple of, maybe for a year or two, we've been having a lot of pilots who, 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 who just plump forget to, to file a flight plan. You know, I mean, it, it was so easy that they really forgot. And so, and then when they get back to the United States, they, uh, you know, U.S. Customs impose a fine because you did not file a flight plan. So to avoid all those problems and also cross-check, we ask that you show a flight plan. Now, of course, when you go to the Old Islands, Bahamas Customs might even ask you, but this is just to protect you, the private pilots, to the destination. And also, each person over the age of six years old must pay a Bahamas, Bahamas uh, government departure tax. Again, once you take off, you must activate your flight plan. And you activate with NASA Radio 128, Point zero or 124.2. Or if you climb high enough, you could automatically just go straight to Miami Radio and get um, activate your flight plan. Also, persons who want flight following, uh, flight following is accessible by NASA Radio. Or if you fly, like I say, if you climb high enough, you get US uh, uh, Miami Radio and they can give you a flight following from whatever destination to. Um, to the U.S. coast. Upon entering the United States, again, we talk about the imaginary line, which is the ATIS. Um, any, any persons who go and cross that ATIS who does not have uh, approval, the whistle and bells goes off, and then, uh, you know, you make the Air Force really nervous, and all of a sudden you see an, an F-16 F jet on the side of you, and which they, will not, they will not be in a happy mood. So to avoid this, one must call flight service station and said, I need a VFR code to get back in the United States. And this is only for VFR traffic. You don't need to call if you're on an IFR ticket. And they will give you a flight uh, VFR code of one, two, whatever else after that. But this, this saves the day, and it's easy, and it just makes life easy for all of us. And then upon arriving to the U.S. shores, you must close your flight plan. Again, it depends where you go, the, the, these uh, frequency normally change. And again, if you're unable to clear it in the air, once you get on the ground, WX brief, you could close your flight plan. And this is very important. You must land at the first port of entry. You know, coming back to Lakeland, you must land 
at Fort Pierce, or if you're coming, at, coming out to the southern part, Fort Lauderdale or Miami, and then come up to uh, 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 Lakeland. You cannot, you cannot clear here in Tampa. You must, now, you could clear if you ask for approval and it was granted prior to your flight, but you cannot get it in route. Once, you, once you're on the ground, you just get your bags, open all the doors, and take your luggage into the custom hall. Customs require that you fill out a uh, general deck. And in the back of the book, uh, also in the back of the room, in the Bahamas book, there is a custom general deck for you. And fellow pilots, believe it or not, that's your round trip to and from the U.S. Now, what I'm going to talk about right now, and I'm going to talk real, real quick before we watch the video, uh, is the Bahamas flying. Now, you know, pilots sit in the room and say, Greg, you know, I listen to you talk about all these different things that you getting the procedures and flying over water and so forth, but I'm still apprehensive of doing it on my own. But fellow pilots, the Bahamas government has put in place a, a program called the Bahamas Flying. And this Bahamas Flying is basically it's just to tell you how easy it is to fly to the Bahamas. What, you, what we do, we leave from the U.S. coast on a Friday to the Bahamas every month, and we, I walk you through all the procedures that you will need uh, to fly in and out of the Bahamas. As a pilot myself, I, I, will, I will, will show you how it's done. And then once we get to the Bahamas, we will have persons, government officials in the Bahamas to welcome you. And we have cocktail parties uh, on Friday night and also on Saturday night to make you feel welcome. So when we have the camaraderie with other pilots, you're able to share stories and as you, as the, if you drink the cocktails, you start telling lies a bit, you know. <laughs> you know but the thing is, we, we, we welcome you to the Bahamas. So once you're there on this fly-in, if you encounter a problem, that problem becomes my problem, and I will fix that for you. So this is easier for us to make sure that you, you fly in and out of the Bahamas, easier. So I, I just cut it short. So now we're going to see a video, because we only have about maybe 10 minutes more to go, and um, then we can answer some questions. And then also we have some some um, giveaways. It's a smaller group, but we have a lot of giveaways that we want to, six giveaways that we want to give you guys for, for coming. So we're going to watch the video right now, and I want to thank you guys for putting it. Kiss my mama goodbye. Going back to the island, I say, don't worry, mama, don't cry. Hello, I'm John Obradovich, and my wife and I published the Bahamas and Caribbean Pilot's Guide. First, let's just say that when you fly to the Bahamas, the hardest flying you'll do is when you go from wherever you live to Florida. That, that's a lot more difficult in terms of restricted airspace and terrain and weather. When you get to the Bahamas, there is no terrain. The highest point is 200 feet above sea level, and the weather is almost always ideal. It's 44 miles from the shoreline to, to the first island, which is Bimini. And from Bimini on, there's virtually an island in sight all the time. Uh, there's large land masses as well as there's small islands, but you always seem to have land in sight and an island in sight. Visiting the islands of the Bahamas. You must file a U.S. international flight plan before departing the U.S., and your first point of arrival in the Bahamas must be at an airport of entry. Each person aboard the aircraft must have proof of citizenship, a passport, or birth certificate. Keep your aircraft registration available and check that your aircraft insurance policy extends to the Bahamas. Most do. All airplanes must have a Mode C transponder, 12-inch registration numbers on the plane, and one U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket for each person. Life rafts are suggested, but not required. Vests and optional life raft equipment can be inexpensively rented at most FBOs in South Florida. At typical cruise altitudes, radio reception is fine. Speaking with the choice of Miami or Nassau radio. Nassau approach, Mooney, 88 Echo Fox, try. 88 Echo Fox, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to cancel flight following at this time. Uh, airport's in sight. Hi, I'm Craig Payton, producer of this DVD. Flying out here is easy, and the radios work fine. Both Bahamas Approach and Nassau Center have remotes throughout the islands. Customs is a no-brainer. You land, you fill out a C7A form. Once you get stamped, then you're free to island hop until you leave the country. 
Offshore weather is usually good VFR. Because of the Gulf Stream's moderating influence, the weather generally remains in the 70s and 80s year-round. For trouble-free navigation, GPS is your best bet, with VORs and ILS approaches in Freeport and Nassau. It can get a little breezy out here in the islands, and I've also found from water to land, you have to consider wind shear. I carry a little bit of extra speed on final. I don't try to plant the plane right on the numbers. Upon arriving, you must land at an airport of entry the first time you enter the islands. Normal hours for customs are 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Clearing customs is no problem. All you do is fill out the Bahamian immigration card, one per person, and four copies of the C7A form. With this single permit, you can island hop with ease. The Bahamian government has developed a private pilot's bill of rights. No landing fees for single engine private planes under 6,000 pounds. No overtime customs and immigration fees for private aircraft visiting for recreational purposes. And no tie down fees at any government owned airport. The islands of the Bahamas begin 55 miles off the Florida coast and are made up of 700 islands, 30 of which are inhabited, covering a vast area of 100,000 square miles. Avgas is currently available at nine airports in the islands. You are never more than 20 minutes flying time away from fuel. Avgas prices are similar to Florida's FBOs. There's good FBOs throughout the country Marsh Harbor, Freeport, Nassau, but also I carry a card from FBOs in Florida. Banyan, for instance, will send a Cherokee with a mechanic to your location if you need repairs in a hurry. And that's nice to know that help is only a couple hours away. When departing, surrender your copy of the immigration card and pay departure tax of $15 per person. You must file an international flight plan with 800 WX Brief, or Nassau Radio in the air. Before takeoff, you are required to contact U.S. Customs at your airport of entry at least one hour before arrival, notifying them of your exact arrival time. A phone call is the only way to comply. Once in the air, you must contact Miami Radio 15 minutes before penetrating the ADIZ, just past Bimini. Hi, I'm David Grantham. I'm a pilot for the United States Customs and Border Protection in New Orleans. Also this year, I'm the chair-elect of the International Federal Pavilion here at Oshkosh. One of the places we enjoy going is the Bahamas, and a lot of us are always a little apprehensive about clearing customs into or out of the Bahamas. This year, if you're going to travel, make sure you make your one-hour call to the U.S. Customs Service prior to coming back into the United States. And we assure you, we don't want to hold you up clearing customs back into the States. Make your call. Try to have as much paperwork done as possible, greet the customs officer, and we'll get you through as quick as we possibly can. Thank you. The Bahamas.com website has a very informative section under Activities Flying. There you'll find important phone numbers, tips, and questions answered. Another popular way to experience the islands, the Bahamas Tourist Office has incorporated fly-in. The fly-ins provide for discounted hotel and sports activity rates. Uh, I'm flying over water, I don't feel there's any uh, more dangerous or troublesome than flying over the land. You got a plane, you got a playground over here. It's very easy. Feel free to call the Bahamas Tourist Office at 800-327-7678 anytime. So fly on over and we'll see you in the islands. I'll be cooking outside in the iron pot so young when I learn I haven't forgot. I guys think? You ready to go? Okay, now in the back of the room we have these, these booklets and these are the pilot's um, guide. Uh, so feel free to pick them up and uh, they answer all the questions, FAQs, what you need. Right, right now I'll ask some, answer some questions. Yeah. You had said that before leaving the islands back to the States that you call customs and get a code number. Yeah. I assume that's a transponder code. Yeah, okay, it's two, two different things. One, 
Uh, you call customs, letting them know that you're ETA, when you're going to come back into the country. And also in this booklet, they have all the information that you will require, which customs require to get back into the country. And it's just to verify a number of persons on board, the aircraft, and so forth and so on. The second one is once you're getting ready to cross the ATIS, you want to get a BFR squad code. Those are two different things. So you switch from one code to the other? Yeah, okay. Once, no, the first one is not a code. The, the first one is just information that you're giving to U.S. Customs. Okay. And, the, and they write it down and they will give you, uh, uh, they will give you a code, maybe the first and last initial. And that will just let them know that on board your aircraft, there's about five persons, so they're all American, and uh, so forth and so on. That's, like, let's say here, uh, aircraft registration number, aircraft <coughs> name of the pilot, number of passengers who are U.S. citizen, last point of departure, estimate time of arrival, and the name of uh, your, your port of entry, your landing port. Those are just a couple of questions. They just want to make sure that that aircraft, that information, in it, they have it on their files. Okay. All right, thank you. But I tell you what, that's a, that's a good question. How about give them one of those um, white things right there? Pretty good. Now, any more questions? Because we, uh, we want to add some, uh, we want to give away some stuff. Now, now we, we talk about ILS approaches. Now, on which islands the ILS approaches are? Okay, now some Grand Bahama. Let's give them. Okay, now we, we talked about um, the experimental coming to the Bahamas. So the experimental has to call, uh, do they call and get the information or they could just come directly into the Bahamas? How do you do it? Just directly now. Okay, that's good. Now, we talked about the closest destination to the coast of Florida. Which island and what's the what's what's the amount? 46 miles, 46 okay, she go you go over there. Okay, this person. Right yeah, this person right here. What is it? Bimini, forty-six nautical miles. Forty-six nautical miles. You can't beat it. Feels longer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we talked, but we, we talked about going to the. Sorry, we talked about going to the Bahamas and uh, uh, in order to clear Bahamas customs coming into the Bahamas. What do we need? Okay, okay, okay. You need a passport. Uh, and what you need? 7A. C7A. 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 And uh, what does you need, uh, Declare? What does you need? Okay, you said a passport, uh, C7A. Something else you need, you know, to actually make it legal. Immigration. Okay, uh, I'll. I'll it's, it's basically uh, you need to file a file flight plan. Oh. Flight plan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you need to have it. So let, let's, let's give them one. And uh, let, me, let me pick one out of here. Okay, tell me yes or no. This is yes or no. Do, in fact, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be nice today. Uh, the only female in the room, I'm going to let her have a bag. <laughs> You know, fellow pilots, you know, it, it, it is disgustingly easy to fly to the Bahamas. And I think the Bahamas government is, is doing, some, doing some work in terms of trying to get you guys to fly to the Bahamas safely. So I also tell pilots, if you fly to the Bahamas and you encounter a problem, please let us know. Because the only way we could fix these problems is because you tell us and we go and we fix it. Because the things, time to time, things can happen. We have 700 islands. You know, the police, these 700 islands, it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard job. But but, but, most of the, but most of the hard work has been done already. The government of the Bahamas wanted to see this happen, and uh, so we put in place these things for us. So I just want to thank you again for coming uh, to this uh, session on flying to the Bahamas. I want to thank the FAA, OB, and his team, who's doing an outstanding job in terms of getting the information out, the private pilots on how to fly their aircraft to the Bahamas, and uh, the, the persons working the floor. I want to thank you guys, too. So on behalf of um, the Bahamas government, I want to thank you. So what that is a good show. Excellent. Well, I'm ready to go to the Bahamas, uh, particularly for that uh, party. Yeah, Baham you know, I, 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 tell, I tell pilots, I say, you know what, I've been doing this for almost, like, almost 10 years or so, you know, the, the, the fly-ins. And I said, I never get it right on a Friday night. So I got to try it over again on a Saturday night, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's good, you know. Okay, uh, stand by for just a minute. You want to come up here and talk to Greg about uh, anything on the islands, ask questions? Uh, get a free card. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what I want to do, too, yeah, my, my business card, you know, as pilots fly to the Bahamas and you encounter any problems, let's say if you're down there, this is an insurance, you know, out of insurance. If you encounter any problems, just 